I want to talk about the beta distribution now. Uh, it's a very useful distribution. And the way we use the beta is uh, as a proportion or a percentage. We are always looking for variables that represent a percent of something from 0 to 100 percent. And we can use beta for that. The beta distribution is actually a family of distributions that include many different shapes of distributions. And it also includes the uniform distribution, by the way. So the beta distribution uh, is described by, actually by four variables, but, or four parameters, alpha, beta, the low, and the high range. <clears throat> and, excuse me, and uh, if we don't include the, the ranges, the assumption is a range 0 to 1. Usually that's how we use it, from a, a range of 0 to 1, uh, a, a value proportion of 0, proportion of, a, of 100%. So let's see how we're going to use this distribution and the, the nature of the function that allows us to get it. Uh, I misspelled beta there. Let me fix that for a second. We're going to use something called the beta inverse function. You can see it here, beta dot inv, and it has three parameters. The first one is a probability, uh, and as you might have guessed, that's going to be the rand. Then we have E4 and E5. E4 and E5 uh, represent the alpha and the beta of my distribution. And by changing those, I can change this, the shape of this distribution. Uh, I can also uh, uh, calculate the, the mean of the distribution uh, by taking the, uh, the, the alpha and dividing it by alpha plus beta to get the mean. And if you look at this distribution, although it's a little scattywonkus there, it is uh, generally has a mean, looks like it's centered at 5.5, and it's fairly symmetrical based on the, uh, the samples that I have in this data table. So here's my, here's my function. Here's my RAND. Uh, let me change some of the values here a little bit. Let's, let's make this half as much, alpha half as much, and watch what happens to the distribution. It moves over to the right, or, or, or skews positive, or, or skews uh, uh, to the right. Uh, if I inverse the, invert those numbers, let's go with 20 and 10 now, where alpha is larger, uh, this is what happens. The, the distribution uh, is uh, more centered around a larger value. Here is the mean, 0.66667. And it's uh, somewhere in here uh, is the mean of our, of our distribution. Uh, when I have these two values equal to the same, then it's centered at 0.5. Uh, when I have them, when I have alpha larger than beta, then it, it's uh, skewed to the left or to the negative, and so the mean is larger. Uh, if I use a value 0.5 and 0.5, something less than one here, I get a distribution that looks like something called the bathtub uh, distribution, which is very high on the ends and minor on the, uh, on the inside of the distribution. Uh, that's a very uh, useful distribution in the world of reliability, by the way. So let me go back to 10 and 30. You'll be given these parameters generally. There, there are ways of calculating by looking at a sample of what your alpha and beta might be. Uh, the other thing we can do with alpha and beta is we can make them larger from a magnitude point of view. They'll keep the same mean, uh, but uh, we could add zeros here and zeros here. And let's see what happens. Let's make this 10,000. And let's make this 30,000. You'll note the mean stays the same, but look how much narrower the distribution is. And of course, the larger I get make these numbers, the narrower this distribution will become until it's an infinitely tall spike uh, at this point, so at the mean. So uh, we can also uh, change the, the, the variation in those outcomes by adding magnitude, uh, multiplying by uh, orders of magnitude to make these uh, values larger. Again, a very useful distribution because uh, it's useful in uh, sampling a proportion, a percentage, the percentage of voters that vote in one direction or another, for example. 
uh, and we, we use it all the time uh, in simulations as a simple tool for uh, uh, taking some proportion of some number uh, that is generated in a simulation. All right, that's the end of our discussion of the beta distribution.